What's going on, gardeners? It's Sunday, May 21st, and the harvests are just beginning here on the southeastern coast of North Carolina. And on today's video, I'm going to share with all of you my secret to growing cucumbers that are never bitter. If you're new to the channel, please subscribe and hit the bell to receive new video notifications and check out our Amazon store and spread shop links in the video description for everything I use in my garden and awesome custom designed apparel and other gear. Your support is greatly appreciated. Cucumbers are part of the cucurbit family of plants. That includes plants like cucumbers, squashes, melons, and gourds. Most plants in the cucurbit family and all cucumber plants contain a chemical compound called cucurbitacin. This natural chemical that resides within the roots, the stems, and the leaves of the plant is responsible for the bitterness of some melons and cucumbers. Now, under normal circumstances, this chemical is tied up in the roots, stems, and leaves. However, when the cucumber plants undergo extreme stress, this chemical can migrate from the stems, leaves, and roots into the fruit under those stressful conditions. Conditions. What it does is it enters the fruit from the stem end, which explains why sometimes only part of a cucumber is bitter, and when you remove those skins, the bitterness can often go away. However, there are cultural ways that you can mitigate this cucurbitacin compound so it never enters your fruit in the first place, and none of your cucumbers will ever be bitter. The first thing that you should do to grow cucumbers that never bitter on you is to only grow burpless varieties of cucumbers. Have you ever eaten cucumbers and then they make you burp after eating? Well, it's the cucurbitacin compound inside the cucumbers that make it repeat on you, and that's why you get a case of the burps. So the burpless varieties of cucumbers naturally have low levels of cucurbitacin. So for that reason, they are much less likely to bitter on you. Now, no cucumber that you can grow will have zero cucurbitacin, but these very low natural levels of the compound make them far less likely to get bitter when the heat of the summer rolls in and the plants get stressed. So they will last a lot longer for you and you will overall get better tasting cucumbers throughout the season. If you've been growing older varieties of cucumbers for many years and they've always worked well for you and you've had success, I understand how difficult it can be to make a change sometimes and change what works for you. However, I'm here to encourage you, try giving up those older varieties and try one of these newer varieties of cucumbers because the new varieties of cucumbers are so good, they just blow away those older varieties in terms of taste and production. All of the cucumbers that I'm growing this year are both parthenocarpic and burpless. I am growing Party Time, Bait Alpha, China Jade, Suyo Long, and Early Prince, and all of them have amazing production. Not only are they burpless so they will taste better and not bitter on you when it starts getting hot, but they are all parthenocarpic, which means if they don't get pollinated by bees, they will still hold on to that female fruit and it will mature. And when it does mature without pollination, they are completely seedless and even more delicious in my opinion. I think that the Early Prince variety is not parthenocarpic. I think it does require pollination, but it is gynoecious, which means that it only makes female flowers, no male flowers. And luckily I have enough male flowers on my other varieties here that I'm able to get pollination. And I've already picked three cucumbers off of this Early Prince plant, and they're really fantastic. I mean, just look at the yields on this party time cucumber right here. It's already loading up with perfect cucumbers. I've already picked three cucumbers off this plant. All of these little baby female cucumbers are going to set because it's a parthenocarpic variety and they have all been seedless so far. I'll show you what this looks like later in the video. The second step to ensuring that you never have bitter cucumbers is to water, fertilize, and mulch your plants. While burpless varieties are resistant to bittering, they are not bitter proof. If they undergo extreme stress, they will still collect the cucurbitacin compound in their fruit and they will bitter. And the number one way that you can stress out your plant is with drought stress and uneven watering. That's why at every single plant, I have drip irrigation where I can water them deeply, roughly about once a week or so, and I apply a nice, thick three inch layer of mulch around the plants to control the moisture because you don't want your plants to undergo radical transformations in soil moisture. You don't want it to go from sopping wet to bone dry 
back to sopping wet. So the mulch layer prevents the evaporation, so that means the soil moisture levels will stay more consistently moist, evaporate more slowly, and you'll have to water a lot less. Now I generally don't like to tell people how often to water because that's going to vary per climate. Somebody that lives in Connecticut where it doesn't get really hot and has slower evaporation will have to water on a different schedule than down here in the southeast where we get deluge rain almost every day in the summer versus someone that lives out on the west coast where they have a defined dry season. They may have to water a lot more often. So this is my general rule of thumb when it comes to watering. The way you generally know it's time to water is you're going to pull back your mulch layer until the soil is exposed and then you're going to take your finger and you're going to stick it in about one to two inches and look at the soil there. And if you find at about two inches the soil is dry, that's how you know it's time to water. Now as you can see right here, the soil is very wet about two inches deep because we just got a 10 inch rain deluge a day and a half ago. So I'm not going to have to water for several days if not longer. So usually when you see that dry out, that's when you want to run your drip irrigation and water very deeply and give them about one to two hours of deep watering on the drip irrigation. If you're not using drip irrigation, you're probably going to have to give each plant like a gallon or two of water or so and then wait until the soil starts to dry out again about two inches down for you to rewater. Fertilizing your cucurbits is a lot more straightforward. You have to keep your cucurbits well fed and you want to keep those leaves nice and dark green because if the leaves start to yellow you are greatly going to increase your chance of producing bitter cucumbers. Now I like fertilizing my cucumbers, melons, squashes, and other cucurbits every two weeks and to start I like to give each cucumber plant one to one and a half tablespoons of a granular all-purpose fertilizer like you see right here anything around a 555 NPK will do and then I also like to give each plant about a half to one tablespoon of bone meal and the way that I apply these is I pull back the mulch layer and I sprinkle the fertilizers in a ring around each plant and then I lightly scratch those fertilizers into the top one inch layer of the soil then I pull the mulch layer back. Then after my granulated organics are put down, I like to follow up with water-soluble fertilizers that I mix in a watering can. I like using Jack's General Purpose 202020, and then I mix it with Alaska Fish Fertilizer, but any brand of fish fertilizer will do. And if you don't want to buy the Jack's 202020 or you find it hard to find, something right off the shelf like miracle Grow 181821 tomato will do just fine. That's the box with the big tomato on the package. So what I like to do is I take my two gallon watering cans and I mix a one tablespoon per gallon concentration of this water soluble fertilizer and I pour in about two to three tablespoons of fish fertilizer. I mix it all together and I water each plant and one two gallon watering can is usually enough to water about six to eight plants and I do that on the same rotating two week schedule. I put down the granulated organics first and then I place the water soluble fertilizers on top because when you wet down the granulated organics after application that begins the decomposition process and overall doing that simply twice a month will keep your plants well fed and happy and before anyone says something like that sounds really expensive to use all of these fertilizers it's not that expensive this is maybe $20 worth of fertilizer if you don't buy it on sale and a bag of granulated organics and a, a box of water soluble fertilizer will care for dozens of plants throughout an entire growing season and if you buy them on clearance like I do in the fall you can get them as much as 75% off. It really doesn't cost that much money. It's still way cheaper than going to a grocery store and the food sure tastes a lot better. Now, if you want to use the exact fertilizers that I use, I'll be sure to link to them all in my Amazon storefront down in the video description. And for your convenience, I'll place some direct links in the video description as well. The third tip to growing cucumbers that never bitter on you is to use shade cloth when it gets really hot and dry in the summer. Even if you're growing burpless varieties of cucumbers and you're doing all the right things when it comes to watering and mulching, if it gets really hot and dry where you live, like in Texas or Southern California or other areas of the South when we get dry spells, there is nothing you can do and they will still get bitter unless you have yourself a nice 
30 or 40 percent shade cloth now this right here is a 40 percent shade cloth it's very well made i've been using them for years i've showed you how to use them on your entire garden i'll link to a video above and down in the video description on how to use shade cloth but this stuff is really inexpensive it's grommeted because it's also a tarp so you can hang it up and also secure it down with garden staples if you cover your plants with these and i think 30 or 40 percent is the right number where they can get sun protection and still get enough sun to fruit and do well you will dramatically reduce the stress of the plants i used these last year on my cucumbers when it got really hot and well into the 90s every day in july and it worked wonders at keeping my garden alive so if you live in a place with really hot dry summers having some shade cloth on hand to drape over your plants can be a lifesaver it will go a long way to reducing the bitterness of your cucumbers during that hot dry period and it's also great at doing things like prolonging the length of the season that you can grow lettuce and broccoli and it prevents bolting on all your cold crops it also does things like it helps reduce flower drop with tomatoes when it gets really hot it can even keep your trees dormant longer in the winter so then they don't break bud early and have your buds killed by a late frost this stuff is really awesome i use it all year round there is always a use for shade cloth if you look for it and just like with the fertilizers if you need to buy shade cloth i will link to a very high quality shade cloth down in my amazon storefront link in the video description underneath the list garden accessories and i will also place direct links to the exact shade cloth that i use and swear by for your convenience. The fourth tip to growing cucumbers that never bitter is also the greatest mistake that most gardeners make growing cucumbers, and that is to never, ever let your cucumbers mature, ever. If you let one single cucumber on that plant turn yellow and produce mature seed, you then signal to that plant that it has produced mature seed and that all of the fruits on the plant are about to ripen. So it triggers that the cucumber plant will naturally die back. And when that happens, not only is your cucumber plant going to die back on you and you're not gonna produce any new cucumbers, but all of the remaining cucumbers on that plant are likely to be very bitter because the plant is going to go through the death throes. It's going to be under extreme stress and bitter your fruits. The way you keep your cucumber plants young, healthy, and productive is you pick them early and often. You want to pick the cucumbers as often as possible when they are still small, because what that will do is it will signal to the cucumber plant that its whole purpose of being alive is really just to produce mature seed, that something is eating all of its fruits, and it reacts by overreacting and producing more and more and more fruits. So the cucumbers are a blessing in such a way that the more you pick them, the more more you get from them. But if you neglect them and you forget to pick them and you let the fruits on the vines mature, then it signals to the cucumber plant that it did its job, it no longer needs to exist, and it will die back. Cucumber plants are great at hiding their fruit, so it's really in your best interest to scour underneath the plants as well as you can, because even missing a single cucumber can put that plant into the death throes. And earlier I told you I was going to harvest some party time cucumbers for you. Believe it or not, these cucumbers are already borderline too large because this is a smaller variety. So I need to pick these off before they start over maturing on me. So I'm going to pull all three of these off and then later in the video, I'm going to break into them and show you how beautiful this fruit is. This is really a winning variety and the key to getting more and more cucumbers is to pick them as early and often as you can. And the fifth tip to ensure that you never get bitter cucumbers on your cucumber plants is to succession plant them. Please, please, please do not try to keep a cucumber plant alive all season long. A cucumber plant is only going to live under a natural lifespan of about three to four months. So even if you have a short growing season, you probably need multiple cucumber plantings in succession in order to take advantage of a full productive season. It doesn't matter if you follow every single tip in this video eventually your vines are just going to get old tired and worn out and they will start producing subpar cucumbers that increase the chances of getting bitter now throughout this video i've been showing you the cucumber plants that i have out in my straw bale garden they were the first cucumber plants that i sowed from seed back in the winter and they are going to be my first crop for harvest i've already been picking off of them for about two weeks and i even just had a harvest of them in this video but these cucumber 
cucumber plants right here are three weeks behind those cucumber plants. That's because I know that those cucumber plants in my straw bale garden will probably be dead by the end of June. They will just be tired and no longer producing optimally. So while those vines are getting really tired, these cucumber plants will start taking over and they will be in, in their prime. That way I'm able to have successive harvests. And then out here on my sunroom, I have a third planting of cucumber plants. Here you can see plants that have just germinated and this will go out into my garden to take over when the other planting that I just showed you start to die back. And here in North Carolina, I only have about a 240 to 250 day frost free period and I will still plant five different crops of cucumbers here. So if you live south of me, you can plant even more successive crops. Even if you live up in New England or significantly north of me, you can benefit from probably planting three different successive crops of cucurbits. That way you always have cucumbers that are in various stages of being very young and healthy so you don't have to deal with the same old tired vines every single year. Then in probably about another three weeks, I will sow more cucumber seeds because I will be expecting the original planting of cucumbers in my straw bales to begin quitting on me. So if I start more seeds in about three weeks, that means probably in about six to eight weeks, they will be ready to go out into my garden and replace the tired plants that should be occupying my straw bales at that point. And I'll just keep the process going until it becomes too cold to grow them. And as promised, I said I was going to give you a taste test of this awesome new party time cucumber. That's what you see right here. So I'm going to cut into this and check that out right there. This right here is a completely seedless fruit. It may be a little bit hard to see, but those are actually hollow endocarps that you see where the seeds should be. There are no actual seeds in that fruit. It is completely seedless. And boy, is that a beautiful looking, perfect cucumber. So I just relocated my microphone because I want you to hear what this sounds like. So crunchy, so fresh, so juicy, not one single hint of bitterness, absolutely none. This would go perfect in a salad. Boy, would this be great with some hummus as well. And that's how you can grow cucumber plants that never produce bitter fruits. Now, I know it may seem like a lot of information in this video, but it's really like tying your shoes. Tying your shoes was difficult for me at first until I learned how to do it, and then it just becomes robotic nature. Really, all you have to do is just make sure you grow the proper varieties, don't let them get too dry, keep them well fed, don't let the plants get old and tired and harvest them often and keep them cool enough in the extreme outbreaks of heat and they pretty much grow themselves. So everybody, I sure hope you found this video helpful. If you did, please make sure to hit that like button, subscribe to the channel, and please ring that notification bell so you're notified when we release more videos like these. If you're curious about any of the products that I used in this video or that I use in my garden in general, they are all linked down below on my Amazon storefront in the video description and I placed the direct links to the items I used in this video Video for your convenience as well. Thank you all so much for watching. I hope to see all of you again on the next video. And if you have any questions, please ask them down in the comments below and I will do my best to address them. All right, I have treats for everyone. Dale, you'll go first. You sit. Everybody sit. Mia, sit. Just hold on, Duke. Gentle. Good boy. Okay. Duke, you go next, Mr. Boss. Good. Now make Mia sit. Mia, Mia she's sitting. She's sitting. She's sitting. And Daisy. 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 Good, Good girl. girl. Good girl. Oh, suddenly they all like me. Yeah. <laughs>